Thank you so much, Ed, uh, and to all the other board members, uh, to honored guests, and to the lovely First Lady. Good evening. You know, Ed's right, uh, I work a lot. And so I wasn't sure that I should actually come tonight. Biden talked me into it. <laughs> he leaned over and he said, Mr. President, <laughs> this is no ordinary dinner. <laughs> this is a big <laughs> meal. It's been quite a year since I've uh, spoken here last. Lots of ups, lots of downs, except for my approval ratings, which have just gone down. <laughs> but that's politics. It doesn't bother me. Besides, I happen to know that my approval ratings are still very high in the country of my birth. <laughs> so. And then just the other day, my dear friend, Hillary Clinton, pulled me aside and she gave me a pep talk. She said, despite the numbers, she said, don't worry, Barack, you're likable enough. <laughs> Which made me feel better. Of course, I may not have had the star power that I once had, but in my defense, neither did all of you. People say to me, Mr. President, you helped revive the banking industry. You've saved GM and Chrysler. What about the news business? And I, t <laughs> I have to explain, hey, I I'm just the president. I'm not, uh, I'm not a miracle worker here. <laughs> Though I am glad that the only person whose ratings uh, fell more than mine last year is here tonight. Great to see you, Jay. I'm also glad that I'm speaking first, uh, because uh, we've all seen what happens when uh, somebody takes the time slot after Leno's. <laughs> by the way, all of the jokes here tonight are brought uh, to you by our friends at Goldman Sachs. So you don't have to worry. Uh, they make money whether you laugh or not. <laughs> we do have uh, a number of notable guests uh, in attendance here tonight. Uh, obviously, uh, I'm most pleased uh, that Michelle accompanied me. She doesn't always go to these things. And there are, there are a few things in life that are harder to find and more important to keep than love. Uh, well, love and a birth certificate. <laughs> the Jonas Brothers are here. They're out there somewhere. Sasha and Malia are huge fans. But uh, boys don't get any ideas. I have two words for you. Predator drones. <laughs> you will never see it coming. You think I'm joking? Uh, speaking of tween heartthrobs, Scott Brown is here. I I admire Scott. 
Rare politician in Washington with nothing to hide. <laughs> now, you should be aware that Scott Brown is not the only one with a salacious photo spread floating around. Recently, David Axelrod was offered a centerfold opportunity of his own. <laughs> now, I did not know that Krispy Kreme had a catalog, <laughs> but it's true. I saw Michael Steele uh, backstage when we were taking pictures, a.k.a. Notorious GOP. Michael, who knows what truly plagues America today, taxation without representing. <laughs> My brother. I did a similar routine last year, but it always works. Odds are that the Salahis are here. <laughs> there haven't been people that were more unwelcome at a party since Charlie Crist. <laughs> Unfortunately, John McCain couldn't make it. Recently, he claimed that he had never identified himself as a maverick. And we all know what happens in Arizona when you don't have ID. <laughs> Adios, amigos. Look, I feel for John. You know, we were on the road together and, and uh, obviously had a hard-fought battle. And, and you learn, certainly at the national level, politics isn't easy. This year, I've, I've experienced my share of disappointments. Um, for example, I had my heart set on the Nobel Prize for physics. <laughs> but hey, you can't win them all. <laughs> Speaking of undeserved honors, uh, a few weeks ago, I was able to throw out the first pitch at the Nationals game. And I don't know if you saw it, but I threw it a little high, a little outside. Uh, this is how uh, Fox News covered it. Right here. <laughs> President panders to extreme left wing of batter box. <laughs> On the other hand, MSNBC had a different take. President pitches no hitter. And then CNN went a different way altogether. I was just asking Chad, <laughs> how can you get a volcano in Iceland? Isn't it too, too when, you think of, when you think of a volcano, you think of like Hawaii and long words like that. You don't think of Iceland. You think right. it's too cold to have a volcano there. I guess that's why they're the most trusted name in news. <laughs> Now look, I, I have a reputation for giving uh, cable a hard time, so let's pick on Politico for a while. <laughs> you know, uh, people attack Politico for putting a new focus on trivial issues, political fodder, gossip sheet. That's not fair. Politico's been doing this for centuries now. Just check out these headlines. Uh, our researchers found these. Japan surrenders. Where's the bounce? <laughs> then there's this one. Uh, Lincoln saves Union, but can he save House Majority? <laughs> I don't know if you can see that there's a little portion there. Uh, he's lost the Southern white vote. It's a studious analysis there. Uh, and my favorite, 
uh, July 3rd, uh, 1776, senior Whig official, talks break down, independence dead. <laughs> so this is nothing new. But even though uh, the mainstream press uh, gives me a hard time, uh, I hear that I'm still pretty big on Twitter, Facebook, or as Sarah Palin calls it, the socialized media.